The Cloudcast is sponsored by Intel Cloud for All, driving the creation of tens of thousands of clouds. Cloudcast Media presents, from the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina, this is The Cloudcast with Aaron Delp and Brian Gracely, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to the Cloudcast. We're coming to you live from DockerCon here in Barcelona. Um, first of all, huge thanks to the Docker folks for having us as a media sponsor here at the show. Um, today we have uh, something actually very different. Uh, we actually have Dan Isla. Isla? Isla. Isla. <laughs> Dan Isla. From, from JPL. Um, so not a vendor in this space. Uh, but 100% consumer and actually a consumer with a really, really awesome and cool job. Um, so, Dan, why don't you give a quick introduction and a little bit about the, the, the buffet of vendors that you're allowed to uh, <laughs> choose from that we were talking about earlier. Excellent. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you very much for having me. I've been listening for a long time and I'm excited to... Uh... Long-time listener, first-time caller? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So I love the variety of the show. I love the um, the guests you have, and um, obviously, just talking about tech it makes my day. Well, so thank you. I'm a data scientist and systems engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I've been there about seven years, and uh, throughout my career, I've had many different opportunities to work on things out of this world, literally. Um, I was on <laughs> sure. the team that built hands on the uh, Curiosity Mars rover that we landed in 2012 on the surface as well as operated the mission on, on Mars. Um, I've also built another spacecraft called SMAP, which is orbiting Earth currently. And now I'm working as a data scientist, taking the data that we get from Mars and from our other um, spacecraft and using big data technologies and containerization to give our systems engineers uh, really agile results from the data to be able to find trends, to be able to, to make these really deep insights about how our missions are doing and where we're going. Yep. And and so what, the reason why I wanted to have you on and, and kind of talk about this a little bit is, you know, we do tend to talk to a lot of um, folks that are in this industry and, and quite frankly have a vested interest in being in this industry. Um, but but you're uh, almost a, a very objective third party <laughs> at this point of, of you get to really analyze all the products that are out there. And your team is very heavily involved with as being bleeding edge as possible, using the right tool for the job and, and kind of this next generation data center architectures. And, and so I'm going to pepper you with a whole bunch of questions. But I'm going to start off with, with, first of all, you know, why are you here at, at DockerCon, and, and what interests you about Docker and the Docker ecosystem? Very good. Um, so I'm here because uh, my boss, the CTO of uh, JPL, um, we have a prototyping group within JPL where we try to bring in all the new technologies and see how they can fit into our mission work. And if we can make that happen, then we'll infuse it more with the, the usual day-to-day, put it in the production-like environment. And so we so it's almost like a tech feasibility, like thumbs up, thumbs down. Like, is this, is this tech cool? Is this yeah. not cool? If we can prototype it in a few weeks or a little longer and it, it works, then the tech is probably ready. If we can't, then it may not be quite ready for what we're trying to do. And this includes tools from infrastructure automation to data processing and transformation to visualization. Um, and so I really love just trying out the different tools. And with Docker and containers, probably the biggest win initially from a prototyping point of view is that I can get started really fast. Sure. I can go from zero to this is good or not good and evaluate it on my laptop um, in just a few seconds rather than trying to like ruin my entire <laughs> Macintosh or Linux system just to install like one Hadoop distribution. It's like, okay, that was a waste of a week you know, <laughs> rather than trying sure. things really rapidly. Right, right. Um, and so containers are really, we see that as the next evolution of virtualization. Um, it's a much more nimble, you know, it's, it's smaller footprint, uh, it lets us move a lot faster, and uh, it, it's a great tool. Um, the other really big advantage we have that we see with, with containers is the legacy world. Um, how do you take legacy applications, which we have a lot of, <laughs> we are somewhat of a big enterprise, uh, and we follow the model, and how do you preserve that or make it, uproot it from its legacy roots and deploy it in a newer environment? I call it future-proofing. Sure. 
And containers are one way that have enabled us to do that with a few of our legacy applications. Well, that's interesting, yeah, because <clears throat> so many times you hear about um, containers is just for kind of next generation stuff and don't don't even worry about that legacy stuff and and it's more of just hey maintain that old infrastructure maintain those old applications maintain everything and and almost that you know two systems if you will the old and the new but but you're actually using containers for for uh, a future proofing aspect absolutely that's and fascinating it's also really good for onboarding our existing essays and mm-hmm. people who are not familiar with the docker technology or containers at all and you can get them started very quickly with an application they're somewhat familiar with and just get them start using the, the Docker commands and how do you Docker run this and what happens when you need to debug it. So it's a really it's a smoother transition to this new fast-paced world. I understand. So in addition to, to kind of future-proofing, what are some of the other uh, really big use cases and some of the cool applications that you guys are coming across right now? So one of the our favorite platforms that um, we've been spending the most time with is Mesos. So we've been using the uh, Mesos, Marathon, um, and Kronos, and some of the other frameworks that come with that to really build what we're calling an analytics cloud. And this is a place where users can come, bring their tools and their data, and deploy the applications they need very quickly on a platform that scales very well. And so having a Mesos schedule and the Mesos scheduler being able to distribute all the applications in Docker containers very quickly um, is, is very enabling. Um, we do a lot of work with Spark and the new and all the Apache tools, so we can deploy um, Spark almost as a service um, on top of Mesos, all fully built in containers, and roll out various versions and have people use that um, very rapidly. So it's been it's been great. I really we really like uh, Mesos so far. Well, it's fantastic. This and. <clears throat> What is so, – so obviously you, you were mentioning about running analytics and, and some of the, that, but what are the kind of use cases, if you will, or the end results of some of these next-generation applications you're building? You know, uh, at the end of the day, it's a, a little bit of like why are you doing it, right? And it, sometimes we like to – you know, it, we're in our own little echo chamber in this industry, and we're like, well, because it's cool, and it's, it's tech, and it's the new tech, and we have to follow it and do this and do that. But – you know, at the end of the day, you're trying to solve problems. So what, what problems are you trying to actually solve? That's awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, uh, NASA and JPL, our, our prime mission is exploration of the solar system. You know, um, is there life um, on Mars? Is there life elsewhere? And one of the problems is we have a lot of data and a lot of legacy tools that analyze that data. So one of the early problems we set out to solve was how can we make the data from a mission, mostly the telemetry or bits and bytes that come back from a spacecraft um, accessible at the fingertips of our users so that they can find, for example, thermal trends on Mars, um, be able to zoom in and zoom out as quickly as possible to see what those trends are. Before, we were seeing people doing a lot of PowerPoint engineering, <laughs> I like to call it, sure. where it's like, okay, I'm going to go scroll out um, you know, 3 billion lines from the SQL database and put it in Excel and then generate a plot, put that in PowerPoint, email it out. And then everyone can review this. And it's great, right? Until they ask a question. <laughs> and you have to repeat that entire sure. cycle. Sure. And it's, it's becoming impossible to do that on a laptop. Mm-hmm. So that's why we built um, this new system with containers that could, is more scalable. We can bring all the data in and do this kind of visualization and transformation server side. Yep. So <clears throat> we've talked about the advantages and we've talked about... The what works. I won't ask you to air too much dirty laundry, but I will ask, you know, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've faced with, with a lot of the new technology? Because obviously when you're, when you're playing with some of the bleeding edge stuff, it's not all as pretty as it possibly could be, right? And so what are some of the kind of operational or, or other challenges that you face? So part of it is that, that this world is moving so fast that trying to keep up with all the changes, like we get a new Docker version every you know couple months or so. It's funny, we're upgrading Docker daemon on all of our um, Meso slaves, and midway through the upgrade, the version changed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we had like half our slaves running one version and half running the other. It's like, okay, this is moving pretty quick. This is great. Right. But uh, so that's been a little bit challenging, but we also have a great team. It's a very small team, and they're all like very agile and, and um, comfortable with change. And so we're prototypers by nature. And so when things are moving and changing, we're really comfortable swapping things out and trying new stuff. Um, so that's been not too bad. Probably one of the biggest, hard, the hardest parts with moving in this world is how do you make it work in an enterprise? How do we scale this to 
the IT ops of the laboratory. Sure. Right? Like, how do you get people that aren't even moving at this pace on board? And you have to have a lot of things in place like security, access controls, authentication, uh, things that are, like, really deeply rooted in your enterprise uh, infrastructure and how do you make that work right yeah. so you spend a lot of time with you know it's mostly process too sure it's dealing with it sec dealing with your essays and like okay just not the technical stuff is kind of right the lost. techie stuff's <laughs> almost easy at times right? yep so um and you actually you you mentioned docker versions and, and we were actually talking before we hit record um what do you find you you were in the the kind of what's next session about docker what do you find most fascinating or what are you f- looking forward to in, in Docker.next or down the road with Docker or, or, or even what are things you, you really wish they're doing that maybe isn't on the roadmap yet? So one of the things I really liked uh, from the keynote this morning was the Docker Content Trust and the new YubiKey signing of images. That's another thing that, you know, as you want to onboard more enterprises, Security is number one. You need to make sure you're not pushing untrusted or unsigned stuff out to everyone. And so that w- I think that's a fantastic model for um, for signing and deploying code. It's, it's, when I was hearing that, I was like, oh, wow, this is moving another step closer to Docker replacing the package manager on your Linux system. I thought that was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, fair enough. Absolutely. The other thing, was, uh, the other thing I, I was pretty excited about was Nautilus. Yes, right. Being right. able to scan a any distribution of Linux is something that, you know, IT sec is going to love. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Because anytime yeah. you can turn the keys over to the developer to let them move quicker, you right. really start to build that more agile DevOps like environment. Sure. Yeah, that that, that makes perfect sense. It, it 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 I agree with you. It seems like they're they're moving fast and furious and, and part of that is, you know, yeah. I found it slightly odd, but then we were talking to some of the Docker folks earlier today um, about, you know, this idea of of actually taking time in the keynote and focusing just on, on quality as a message as part of the keynote. And, and you know, the, it, you have to step back for a second and kind of go, oh, yeah, there might be collateral damage mm-hmm. to you going so fast at times. Um, and they are having to kind of take a step back um, from a quality aspect. But I think that's the right thing to do. Absolutely. Like, you know, to... Um, get rid of a lot of that technical debt is uh, absolutely necessary and just builds even more confidence in the uh, in the platform. Yep. Um, even if you know, Docker containers in general are really where the industry is kind of moving. And so whoever comes out on top, is it Docker, is it Rocket, is it right. Joyin, whatever, <laughs> you yep. know, it, it, whoever has the most robust system that you can trust is probably going to be the one who wins. No, I agree. I agree completely. Well, uh, we're kind of out of time here. Um, so, Dan, where can everyone uh, follow you or ask you questions or kind of follow up from here and, and learn more about what else uh, you have going on at JPL? Sure thing. Um, we well, can always see what the, uh, the laboratory is up to at www.jpl.nasa.gov. You can follow me on Twitter at, at Dan Isla. And you can also visit our data science site at itds.jpl.nasa.gov. Fantastic. All right. Uh, so on behalf of uh, Dan and uh, Brian Gracely, who uh, was not able to uh, make it over here for the trip, thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to The Cloudcast. Please visit thecloudcast.net to find more shows, show notes, videos, and everything social media.